This is Twit. A lot of people haven't embraced PG PGP because it's kind of tough to set up. Right. You have to basically like create this set of keys and it's intimidating and what does that mean and how do I share that with people and all those things. Mm -hmm. um, uh, one of our uh, producers here, Jerry, uh, he actually uh, clued me into a, a Chrome extension that I'm kind of sad to say I didn't know about previously, <laughs> but it's quite popular. It's called Mailvelope um, and it's actually a Google Chrome extension. and tried a few different services in PGP. I've spoken with some friends uh, who are reporters and are encryption experts, and uh, Mailvelope is the easiest tool that I've seen so far to set this up and to use it. Okay, cool. Well, let's take a look and see how it works. Yeah, so let me walk you guys through this. So basically, if you go, if you're using the Chrome web browser, which is the most popular web browser out there, so you, you very likely already are, but if you're not, this might be a good reason to give it a shot. Mm -hmm. um, you add the Mailvelope extension inside of the Google Chrome Web Store, and uh, it's spelled Mailvelope. Mailvelope, like pretty straightforward, yeah. Pretty straightforward. So you add the extension, and then once you do that, I've already actually created a couple keys and I've added some people here. So the first thing you want to do is generate your PGP keys. So you can kind of think of this as an address. If I share my PGP key to you personally, or maybe I put it on my Twitter account so it's public and anyone can message me, right. that basically gives people, if they're using a, um, encryption, a PGP uh, message, a place to send it. And if they're using PGP and I'm using it, it'll get routed to me. Okay. It, I'll be the only one who can decrypt that because I have a corresponding second set of keys that I only have access to. Okay, and you're not limited to just having one key. Like you yeah, can you, can have, you can have multiple. Actually, we'll look for Leo in this service <laughs> ma mail envelope. He has like a dozen of them set up, which is pretty great. But um, yeah, you can, you can set this up. You can set however many you'd like. Okay. But basically, it's a public address so people can route stuff to you, but, but it doesn't mean that people will have access to it because it's only one half of the equation. Okay. I have my private key on the other side to decrypt the message. So the first public key that gets sent out to everybody, if you want it to be shared on social networks, whatever, you want to add it into your email uh, uh, signature, you can do these sorts of things, then that's just a routing address, so to speak. Okay. That other second side is basically me opening my own mailbox and bringing it into my home or whatever, if you want to use that analogy and take right. it another step further. Um, that being said, it's, pr it's password protected because these, are, these keys are just kind of numbers and letters and it's not easy to remember. So right. When you create these things, you're going to have to remember what your password is <laughs> or else you won't have access to it. And if you ever want to revoke access to that key and you don't have your password, you're pretty much SOL. You're, okay. It's like not going to happen. <laughs> um, so, so it's pretty important to remember that. Um, and just like with any other password, we've spoken about this in a lot of other episodes. And, and I know Padre and Leo and everyone's kind of hit, hit these notes. But don't make your password to this the same as all of your other services. Make right. sure you have unique and specific passwords because, you know, if your password to this is the same as, you know, like Gmail, Facebook, iTunes, every single other thing you have, Amazon, whatever. But that's already a bad practice. Bad practice. Yeah. You're gonna you're, you're asking for someone to take advantage right. of, of of your I uh, guess you, your bad choice. You there. could use a password manager, generate a password, and then just save it in that. Right? That could be an option as well. That could okay. be an option as well. And and we do advocate uh, here overall for the use of password managers and and kind of recommend that uh, if you if you want to give that a shot. So so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna actually set up. I I created a uh, email account called twittest007 <laughs> at outlook.com and uh, I'm going to create a PGP key associated with this email account. So that's uh, Microsoft Outlook that's not encrypted end-to-end. -end. They mm -hmm. serve ads in there and all these sorts of things. So the first thing I'll do since it's 007 I'll put my name down as James Bond. Obviously, my name is not James Bond. I'm not that cool, but nonetheless, there it is. This is a good example. Yeah, yeah. And I'll put down my email address as twittest007 at outlook.com. And I'm going to click this advanced button here. I'm going to set this, uh, this PGP key to expire. Let's do it. Um, like next Monday, okay. uh, so to speak. So it's going to be short term. I'm not going to have this last forever. If you don't want to have an expiration date, if you're, you say, hey, you know what? I want to have one PGP key for the rest of my life. Yeah. That's cool. That totally works. But if you want to use something temporary, let's say maybe you're in one of those situations where you are sharing sensitive information, mm -hmm. it might be something that could put you at risk professionally, even put you at risk for your life. You might not want these things to exist forever. Right. That's totally fine. Or maybe you just don't want the hassle of having to remember that password all the time. Yeah. That totally works too. Whatever your reason, 
buttons decide whether or not it's um, temporary for you it's or not. Like the Snapchat version of like an email. Like. Kind of. Yeah, there's a lot of things sliding Set an expiration here. on it. Yeah. All right, so you're going to, like I said, you're going to need to create a password that you can remember that is secure for your access to that second key that is just yours to decrypt any messages you get sent, right? Okay, that makes sense. So uh, I created the password here, and I am checking this box to upload my public key to the Mailvelope key server. Um, this is something you can undo or you can delete at any moment that you want. Uh, you don't have to do this, but, but, but basically what that does is it uploads your public key, not mm -hmm. the one that you have pa that's password protected, but the one that is my routing address that can get anyone to send me an encrypted message mm -hmm. using this um, technology. Um, that can be uploaded to a public server. Now, there are a few different public servers, and these services tie into other public servers. So there's some at MIT and all these things. Okay. But this, again, this is a shared community. It's open source stuff. It's, it's kind of like a shared build community thing. So if you want people to find you, let's say uh, you know, you're, you're a journalist, or maybe you have a lot of friends who are doing these sorts of things, mm -hmm. or whatever, the, whatever your reason might be to have a public key, you want people to find you to send you things confidentially, right. um, then this is a good idea do, to do. If you're on that other side and you don't want people to know that you have a public key out there, mm -hmm. you can keep that secret. Again, you can use your real name or not. I'm using James Bond. Clearly, my name is not James Bond. <laughs> so when people go and search for this in James Bond, yeah. for the next three days, they'll be able to find it. Right. But if not, um, after that point, it'll disappear. Cool. Okay. So I've got that all set up. I've got my email address in there. I've got my, my name. This time it's fake. <laughs> Mr. Bond. Um, I've got my expiration date set. I've got my password and it matches. And so now I'm going to generate these keys. So as you can see, the key generation is happening. It might take a little while, depending on you know all sorts of different factors, uh, uh, internet connection and 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 how their how their servers on their end are working. Mm -hmm. um, but do you expect me to generate a key? <laughs> no, I expect you to die. <laughs> all right. Yes, uh, and hopefully not during the episode. <laughs> yeah. No. After we get this one. Yeah, done. when we're done. Yeah. yeah. So it says here, success, new key generated and imported into keyring. So. That a key has been generated. Now, what I'll do is I will show you. I'll go to display keys here, and you can see different things. I created the other day a one by the name of Peter Parker tied to my work twit email address, <laughs> Nathan at twit.tv. Uh, now we have my James Bond joint here, and I was corresponding with Jerry, um, and you can see that there as well. So now I have my keys, and I say, okay, great, I've got my stuff. Now I actually want to send an encrypted message, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so once you have that set up with this extension, this is one of the reasons why this extension is so great and makes it so easy is, um, all right, so the next thing you want to do is write an email and you want to encrypt that email with your PGP key using uh, the Mailvelope extension. So okay. uh, I'm going into my Outlook account that I've set up to specifically test this thing. Um, don't email this uh, address because I won't answer, but nonetheless, setting this up, I'm just going to I'll send it to Jerry. I'll say, Jerry, this is a PGP test. Neat. Um, and with the extension in place, one of the great things is when you go to your message, mm -hmm. Uh, you see this little pop-up here. You see this ah, like little notepad? Yeah. Well, you click that, and then that opens up a new message. And I say, okay, here is my message. Mm -hmm. That looks good. I'm going to send that to Jerry, cool. who have already added his key. I've searched for that, and I'll show you how to do that after this. Okay. And now I want to say encrypt. And so you can but see this all looks like go gobbledygook, right? Yeah. I just wrote it in there. You know, hey Jerry, this is a PGP test, Nate. And now it looks, now it's, what is that? I can't read that. Well, what yeah. that is, is that is basically the encrypted version of my message. Okay. And, and so then you just send that? Exactly. If anybody were to intercept this, if someone hacked into my account, they wouldn't be able to read this because it's encrypted. So right. if they got a hold of this, they wouldn't be able to tell what it is or anything like that, who <laughs> it's from, all these sorts of things. So then I set, hit send, and that will send this message. Uh, out to Jerry. Cool. Actually, let me put that in here. So, and then Jerry would have the extension on his laptop so that he could then use that to decrypt it? Yeah, exactly. Sorry. Envelope. Yeah, so I send this message and then it gets sent uh, to Jerry and Jerry won't be able to read it unless he has my public PGP key. Okay. So he can, you know, he sees my email address and he says, okay, you know, uh, uh, who's that? Yeah. And he can search for my email address 
if I shared it publicly, he'd be able to find it and add me and then decrypt it. Okay. Uh, and if not, then I would have to send it to him directly. So let me show you how to find someone on this service. Basically, in Mailvelope, you go to the Import Keys tab over here, and then you look for someone either by their name or their email address or by what's called a key ID, which sometimes people will share on there as well. It's not the full PGP key, but it's a way to find people. And you might right. see that. You might see PGP colon, and then it's kind of like a maybe like a dozen numbers and letters or something. Yeah. That's what that key ID is. Okay, okay. So let's look for Leo. So we'll look for Leo Laporte, and we'll search that. And then as you can see, Leo has a lot of PGP <laughs> keys set up well, here. Could this be other people who have the same name too? But I mean, it's probably our Leo. Yeah, theoretically, there could be multiple Leos out there. I actually talked with Leo about this already, and he told yeah. me he had something like 12 to 15 different keys set up. Um, like Leo. Yeah, so it just kind of depends. And then uh, what you do is you click uh, one of those blue links, and then it's, it shows you their PGP key here. So, so all this garbled up text, that's the actual PGP key. Wow. And then you see this blue key here that pops up. I got my green little plus button. I hit it. And then that has oh. imported that key from Leo into um, the Mailvelope extension for me. Okay. So now we go back to display keys. And I see all these different options here. I see here's Leo Laporte. I see Jerry Wagley. I see my, uh, my James Bond account. I see my Peter Parker account. Okay. So that's a way to find someone. Again, this is stuff that's shared publicly out there. Right. And I'm put, not, not sharing anything Leo doesn't want to see because he publicly allowed uh, that information to be out there. Anyone can go and find that. Hmm. But now if I want to send private correspondence to Jerry or to Leo or to my other account, uh, I can do the, that uh, using this app. Now let's say that I get a, a message uh, uh, from someone that maybe I don't know or maybe someone that I do. So I got uh, Anthony, who's one of our producers here. He sent me uh, a message using PGP and then he added uh, his key ID into the signature of his email address. Okay. The reason why he would do that, and this is the key ID again, is, is is just a way to find his public key, yeah. not sharing anything private that's, that's private to him, is basically if he sends me this message or to anyone else and it's encrypted with PGP, it allows them to basically decrypt it without having to say, hey, Anthony, I saw you sent me that. It's encrypted yeah. with PGP. Like, what's your public key, right? Uh, okay. okay. Yeah, so this extension is smart enough to know that Anthony sent that to me and it recognizes that in the signature of that email, mm -hmm. his key ID is there. So it went out, it got his public key, and now it will decrypt it for me. So you see here on, on my screen, it shows up this little envelope with like the little wax stamp in the back to kind of keep things sealed. Yeah. Uh, I tap that, and then it, <laughs> and then. And now the seal has been broken. The seal's been broken. It's unencrypted for me to see. Okay. I'm the only one who can see it because of that decryption. And it says here, signed with an unknown key. It's like, well, you haven't added Anthony to your key list. I see. Do you want to do that or not? But basically, it allows me to get access to that because Anthony gave me all the pieces I need. He okay. gave me access to his public key. Right. He gave me his message. And Mailvelope does the rest. Okay, okay. So the, the whole... You know, I guess payload or the, the file yeah. that got sent to you has been encrypted and then you're decrypting it on your end because of the information that Anthony sent along. Yep, you okay. got it.